What do you see from Derek Carter today? You needed him to step up and play. My goodness gracious, he played well. Man, he was flying around, really productive, eight tackles, two sacks, three and a half TFLs, a sack. And uh, man, just he's as solid of a player in, in our program. Just couldn't be more proud of him, just the work that he put in to transition and play our wheel backer tonight. And, uh, you know, all his hard work came to fruition. It was displayed for the world to see. And, and uh, he can play any, any position that we ask him to in the linebacker room. Um, and uh, he had excelled tonight, and it was fun to watch him fly around. Wes, I know it wasn't perfect, but was this what your defensive guys needed to see today, the way you played against the run and just kind of kept them in check? Yeah, most definitely. We gave up some uh, – some bad runs at time, the third and long and stuff like that. But overall, I thought our, our guys really responded and played great run defense. We, uh, we, we played aggressive, got after folks, and uh, uh, I, I, thought, I thought it was a, a, a really good job by our front seven, especially building the wall on, on their run schemes. Coach, end of the first half there, two seconds left. You were probably thinking, hey, Mary, were you surprised that Malik decided to take off and run for it the way he did? No, he, he pulled it down because we pressured him. You know, um, uh, we have a couple different ways that we defend last plays of the half, and uh, I wasn't going to give him a chance to throw one in the end zone, so we brought a five-man pressure. Barrett, I, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the back picked him up or whatever, but he was able to force him off the spot. Uh, I think the coverage downfield was good, and, and he elected to, to scramble right there. So it wasn't going to give him a chance to throw it in the end zone. What adjustments did you have to make when you realized that he wasn't coming out in the second half? You know, I, we didn't call the game any different. Um, I, I felt like their uh, their backup quarterback, you know, the offense doesn't change that much per se. Um, so we just kept our, our scheme the same, still called the same defenses the second half and um, maybe a little more pressure. Uh, but um, the, the guys responded coming out of the half. Coach, I was coming off of last week, and you feel like the guys had a little bit more tenderness to them. Yeah, most the definitely. Time. You know, uh, that was the huge challenge this week. Just want to see guys respond, challenge them. You know, it's about mindset, mentality, um, next play mentality. And, uh, you know, I thought this was an unbelievable week of preparation every day. There was great energy, great focus, discipline, details. And, uh, you know, this was a huge challenge. You know, I, I got as much respect for these guys offensively as anybody in the country. And they, they were playing with a lot of confidence. Um, and it uh, was a, a huge challenge coming in. But I, our guys rose to the challenge tonight. And uh, we stayed – our whole, whole message this week was we're going to attack. We're going to blitz. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to take the – uh, you know, take the fight to them per se. And uh, the guys responded. They felt really confident and uh, they were locked in tonight. Coach, for most teams, losing Trenton Simpson would be a huge loss. I imagine you know, he'd be a pretty good spy for a quarterback like Cunningham. Um, how much of a luxury is it to have a guy like Barrett Carter to step up the way he did? Yeah, definitely. It is truly a blessing, you know, just moving guys around in my room versus having to take a safety and put, put in that role. But, um, you know, thankfully at Clemson we have some depth and, and able to, to move guys around, and, and uh, he played really well tonight. Speaking of depth, talk about what would I have Yeah, you know, uh, moving Barrett over, we needed a bigger body when they went 12 personnel. And I think he played really well. He had the calls fumble down here in the west end zone. Unfortunately, we couldn't get that. Um, you know, I thought he uh, I thought he played really well for a true freshman and really uh, had a great week. Um, he prepares as, as, as well as any freshman I've been around, you know, attentive to the details. He's always asking questions. He's inquisitive and, and wants to do it how we coach it and ask him to do things. And, and uh, I thought he played really solid in his role tonight. Would you say that uh, today was a kind of a bend but don't break style of play, especially with the change of QBs you were mentioning? And they went from cutting in to the backup. Uh, what day of the week leading up in practice did you really see while well, this defense is, is ready to go or they seem locked in right for, for today's game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think even coming out Monday night after after the weekend, guys were ready to move on, take the next step. They came out with the right mindset. You know, I, I don't think there was any, there was been, there was no been, been don't break mentality tonight. We were going to be aggressive coming off the bus. We were going to pressure probably the most aggressive game I called this year, maybe comparable to the Boston College game. 
but we were going to take the fight to them. And uh, you know, I, I think I think they gave us a, a great opportunity to defend their their read option schemes, and uh, just wanted to be aggressive. And the guys felt really confident and comfortable in what we were doing. And, and they got the details down early in the week, and, and I knew that that we had the opportunity to play really well tonight. Is that a mindset you can take forward? And can this defense build off this form in the last two games of the season? Yeah, most definitely. You know, we're still growing. You know, obviously, you know, moving Barrett over, that's a new position for him. I think, you know, uh, just guys growing, continuing to grow in their roles. And, and, and uh, you know, every, every week there's a new offense, new game plan. So, um, you know, different game plans call for certain guys to be in the game, different looks, different schemes. <laughs> And uh, our guys are getting more comfortable every week. Obviously, Barrett Carter's versatility to cover and rush, and I'm going to cover the line next to Sam, but being in the box, I mean, is there another aspect of, of his skill set he's able to kind of display in there? He's unbelievably natural at all three linebacker spots, Sam, Mike, and Will. Like, <clears throat> just the intelligence. He has great vision, great feel for the game. He understands backfield sets, understands run fits. He understands a lot of things that just allow him to play extremely fast and physical. And, uh, you know, unbelievably talented, but just his work ethic also separates him. There's nobody that prepares harder. He's always in there studying film and putting in time on his own. You know, we only have limited amount of hours with, with these young men. And he does such a great job preparing himself like a pro and just, uh, uh, Unbelievable night by him. Talked about guys continuing to grow. How much was this last week an opportunity for you? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, unfortunately, first loss as a coordinator, and uh, just you know, you don't change anything really when you have your process and you believe in, in your preparation. You just go back to work. You know, Sunday, Sunday, Monday's Monday, Tuesday's, so forth and so on. But. Um, you know, we challenged our guys. You know, it's all about how we respond, and uh, they responded the right way tonight. Coach, you know, two-minute offenses are always kind of hard to stop, but we've seen Florida State, Notre Dame, and today offenses put together drives at the end of the half, end of the game. Um, any thoughts? Is that maybe something to work on, or is it just as simple as that offense being hard to stop at the end of, end of halves, or any thoughts there? I mean, the first half, we, we kind of stayed a little uh, – we played some loose zone coverage, but the last play of the half, we, we pressured. I wasn't going to let him throw the ball in the end zone, so we brought up one of our end of the half uh, pressures, and uh, he pulled the ball down. Um, we were able to get pressure and come free. And the, then the last the dr last drive of the game, just unfortunate there. Um, a couple missed run fits um, allowed him to get plus territory, and then we had subbed our corners and uh, just – just a no, no, uh, numerous things that that's more self-inflicted versus uh, what we saw. I'm sure you've talked about this, but this Barrett coming in and playing the way he did and kind of moving positions a little bit is what we can see. Yeah, I mean he, he's he's special, and uh, the kid just our young man just works really hard. He prepares like a pro. Had had has an unbelievable mindset. He's super intelligent. Obviously, he's athletic and can do a lot of things, and uh, he can play all three positions for us. Uh, shoot, we can move him next week. He can play Mike. He'll go back out and play Sam. He'll play Money on third down and cover the tight end. You know, every week he probably learns three to four different positions, and uh, he doesn't bust. I mean, he, he prepares. He knows our scheme in and out, and uh, just really cool to have a guy that you can move around and uh, who's versatile. He, He's just as natural in the box as he is out on the edge. And uh, he has great vision, great understanding, great intelligence. And uh, the game's not too big for him anywhere you put him. And can you kind of go through the thought process with, with Trent out as far as, OK, how do we kind of move the pieces around, get RJ in more, play play Wade a little more? Just kind of what was that all thought process like? Yeah, just, um, you know, moving Barrett inside, you know, just RJ is such a, a super savvy, intelligent guy as well. I mean, he, he just understands ball. It doesn't matter where you put him as well. He understands our scheme, understands uh, run fits from that position, both safety spots. And uh, 
under, understands the passing game as well. So just really, really fortunate to have guys like that that you can move around. You know, nickel personnel or nickel versus their 11 personnel stuff. Put RJ, and then once they went 12 personnel with two tight ends, we, we, we were playing Wade and base. And uh, Wade, Wade's really coming along, you know, has a, has played it, uh, in spot roles here and there, but the game's not too big for him. He really understands the position, super long, super athletic, really savvy, intelligent player. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the uh, fumble that he knocked loose down here in the West End zone. But I think he, him and RJ, a couple things they could clean up. Um, I, I felt like they, there was a, a couple times just – Probably being new to new to the position, and, and uh, but but we'll get things worked out. And those two uh, played really well tonight. And then at what point did you did you change with uh, no problem with Malik? It seemed like his, they probably weren't going to run him much uh, with his hands. So at what point did you kind of realize that? Did that change the game plan at all for you? No, I, I just called our game plan that we we had uh, been practicing all week. No, no matter what his feel was or or even when they changed quarterbacks, our mindset still stayed the same. They they run run their system. I, I didn't notice it. I haven't noticed a huge change when they when they change quarterbacks. So um, our mindset was to stay aggressive and, and uh, get after them tonight. And he has asked the forty four yarder. Um, just from your vantage point kind of where that went wrong. That was on the third down, right? Third down. So, yeah, we called a pressure, and uh, I'm not exactly. I know you your field level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it ran away from one of our safeties. I, I, I can give a better viewpoint later, but um, but yeah, you know, backed up. That's that's one thing you always have to be alert for. You know, run game and screen game. You know, guys get conservative when they're backed up on third down. Probably should have made a better call there, but. And Sheridan Jones, I feel like he's one of the, sorry. Yeah, one I, of the more, I got um, underappreciated guys on this team. Most definitely, it's been, he's been been getting better every week. You know, unfortunately he missed the, the time, came back Florida State, I think it was Florida State, but, but the last few weeks he's been playing as solid as anybody. You know, I, um, he gave up a couple competitive plays in the Syracuse game, but but really has been a solid rock back there. Um, the veteran guy, the group, you know, he does a great job of pouring into those younger guys and kind of showing them the ropes. And uh, he's playing really good ball right now for, for us. Thank you.